Guys, shall we begin? No, please. Yes, please. So, just to recap, where we stopped last week was at the semantics of grammars. So the grammar of, for example, an expression is, well, if S is an expression, then what we know is that it can be formed as the addition of two expressions, or the multiplication of two expressions, or the subtraction of two expressions, etc. Uh, we can also have comparisons, like an expression is greater than another expression, an expression is smaller than another expression, etc. Now, when does an expression end? When does it stop being defined recursively? When it's a value. When it's a value. So, I'm just going to say here V, that stands for value. The value is either an int or, in our case, a boolean. A boolean. Yes. So, val stands for value. Uh, how else can an expression finish? Exception. Or an error. That's brutal. So it's much simpler than that, actually. So it is a value, yes. So we can have an expression like 3 plus 3. But what other kind of expressions Variable. do we have? Variables. So we have a variable, and the variable is just a name. Right? Yeah. So we could say 3 plus, and then we use this one to expand the, the second element of the plus. So 3 plus right. 2 <laughs> times x. This is the kind of expressions we have. Now, for the semantics of this, uh, so what is the semantics of S plus S going to be? Yes, but are S are the two S's expressions or numbers? Uh, it can be expression both. They could, they could be both. So, hello, welcome. Goes. So if they could be both, in the case they were expressions, can we add them directly? No. No. So what do we have to do to be able to add them? Evaluate. To evaluate them. Yes. So I'm going to evaluate. Oh, sorry. We used um, another symbol last time. So arrow with an E stands for evaluate expression. So I first evaluate the first operand. I'm going to call them S1 and S2. So the first thing I evaluate is S1. And what do I get? A value. Sorry? A value. A value. A. So am I going to call it value 1? Yeah. Yes. Then what do I do? S2. Get S2. I evaluate it into value two. Value two, yes. Uh, now we know that values can be either ints or bools. But which ones can we add? We are not going to do dirty things like booleans or zero and one. No. 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 No, we are not. So what do we require then? That v one and v two are both ints. Ints. So we say v one is int and v2 is int and what do we return here then? What? v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 not an error we can say the same thing and v1 is not int or v2 is not int then we return an error so we would have s1 plus s2 S1 goes into V1, S2 goes into V2, V1 is not int, or V2 is not int, then here we return the error, okay? So the first thing that you might notice is that we have plus here and plus here. Are they the same plus? Yes. Well, the one is adding expressions and the other one is adding values. 
So this is just a symbol. This is an operation. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Never more. So this is just a symbol, the symbol of addition between expressions. This is the actual operation of you have two integers and you add them together and you get an integer. So this is the, if you want, this is the, 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 uh, the CPU operator and this is the programming language operator. Okay? So, Okay. <laughs> now, um, suppose now that we want to evaluate a variable x. What is the value of the variable? Look at the memory. Does anyone else want to volunteer an alternative? So he says we look it up in memory. Um, or variable declaration. Yes, or you could telephone the Oracle. Writing the left and right side. A variable requires to know the value of the variable, requires to look it up from memory. So this means that this was not enough. We actually have to carry memory with us. So M, X. You know what M stands for? Memory. Memory. No. <laughs> so what we do here ah, what we do here is we just return m of x which means look up x into m so how do we change the definitions above well we are saying now that to evaluate left of the arrow we have memory comma an expression but here we have only an expression what do i need to add here memory how m comma m comma s1 plus s2 i'm also going to use brackets and then where else does memory go let's start with s2 s1 m comma s1 and m comma s2 M comma S2. Also here, M comma S1, M comma S2, and M comma S1 plus S2 in case of error. Wouldn't you add it then after the evaluation arrow that uh, it isn't P1 but uh, memory of S1? This is evaluation of expressions, and I'm assuming that evaluating expressions mm -hmm. does not change memory. Okay. So just expressions, stuff like 3 plus X, etc. Statements, on the other hand, change memory and return no value. So an assignment, x is assigned to expression e with memory would, this is the arrow s, so that was arrow e, but if you, I'm evaluating this and this is a statement and not an expression anymore, then how would I solve this? This is assignment. I'm assigning the value of expression e to variable x. Um, we start with memory. Yes. We're going to do something with memory. Yes, but and what do we evaluate first? Uh, e. E. And do I use arrow s or arrow e? Uh, you're replacing the memory, so you're using arrow s. Are you sure? Now you're only placing the variable. Um, evaluating the expression, and therefore you use value. Uh, this is an expression. E. So, m comma e, arrow e, and goes into the value of expression e. So this was something like three plus five times y. Yeah. So this doesn't change memory. Three plus five times y gives us back a value, but it doesn't change the memory. Change the memory. Exactly. Then. On the other hand, the evaluation of the statement will change memory. How so? It changes the value of e. The value of? Of x. x. The value of x in Two. memory. Two. So what we return is New memory. memory where x. So it, it doesn't fit. So I'm going to write it more. Sorry. 
So memory where x is now connected to what value? Value e. So value mm -hmm. one. V e. Yes, yeah, sorry. The resolution is, is so a meter point. So value e goes into memory prime, and then we return memory prime. This is seriously intuitive. I, I am not kidding. So I'm just saying the transitions of the various objects. So and the arrow just means compute. Questions? Feelings of dread? Favorite. <laughs> okay. Now. In unrelated news, we are testing uh, fire pitch for students that do not get the B or equivalent credits for the last uh, for, for every year. <laughs> no. <laughs> there is one aspect. Oh no, it, it was kind of funny. Um, today we had the, the um, this, uh, we had the introduction day with the um, prospective first year students. And I, did, you torture now? and I did actually mention the fire pit. <laughs> and you were like, well, dance, fire pit, <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> so, because I said, you may help each other, but remember that at the end of the day, the worst 5% goes into the fire pits. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't help other people too much. <laughs> and they had a moment of not understanding and panic. Uh, yeah. Wait, so uh, seriously, how, how to, how to uh, give this school a bad name? Just, that's <laughs> yeah. the first day with them. Take it seriously. Man. So, so yeah. <laughs> it's fun? not even the first day. No. Oh, no. He makes them scared that they're not even in the school. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, for some it's actually proper. Now, that's a great idea. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which bit do you find kind of dirty? In this formulation here. There is a bit I do personally find dirty. I don't like it. In this whole page, there is one bit in particular, a check that should not be needed if we were sure that the program would not contain crap. Right? No, it, it, it checks for the ints. Yeah. The check for the ints. I mean, this check is needed if you write something like 3 plus true, which is, or, no, no it is nothing. It could be. And oh my god, what, what it, JavaScript bro. says in these cases, it's, it's, a, it's really like a symphony of, of, of mental illness. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> yeah. horrible. But it's so or, oh my god, I just discovered in Python, you can do actually empty string and true, which is false, because empty string is, 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 is false. Yeah. And non empty string is true. It is yeah. beautiful in a deranged That's sense. So, weird. so, anyway, like anything in the semantics that gives an error, we would like to be able to catch it before. And how do we avoid having to perform this kind of check? If the type is known. Sorry? If the type is known to memory. If the type of the variable is known to memory. Or is in memory alongside with. Does it need to be in memory, the type? No, only that. Can be in the code. So, what does a programming language like Java, or better yet, F sharp, do before running? So, if you write code like, like 3 plus 2, what does it say? So, 3 plus 2, when you run the program, then this thing here happens, right? This is what happens when you run the program. Yes? But can you run this program and then get to this error here in F sharp? No. What will you get? Complaining that you can't add them. A compiler error complaining that you cannot add these values. And why can you not add these values according to the compiler? Because plus can have two. You can't add an int with two. You can add you cannot add an int with a uh, boolean. With a boolean. <laughs> So it says that the types of these things do not match. <coughs> so enter 
the type system. The goal of the type system is to reject what sort of programs? Programs with incorrect value. That, that generate runtime errors. Yes. So rejects programs that would give a runtime error. All of them, so all programs that would give a runtime error. In a perfect world, do we live in a perfect world? Sadly, Sadly, Sadly no. 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 So let's act Almost. some programs that will give a runtime type error. Now, uh, of course, then you have the extreme of JavaScript and Python, etc., or, or PHP, <laughs> if you're feeling particularly dirty, uh, that uh, do, they, do they reject any program? No. And is this always a good thing? No. no. Because how many ways can a Python script blow up? Uh, infinite? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is one of those combinatoric answers that uh, so the number is very, very, very large for a very small program. Uh, on the other hand, uh, did you get the feeling that a language like F sharp, Haskell would be even more, uh, even stronger in this regard? Is it a forgiving language? No. Does, it, does the compiler complain a lot? Yeah. You, you, you should have noticed this. It is very hard to even get to the point where you're running the program. Because the compiler keeps saying no, 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 no. <laughs> it's very That's annoying. But it is annoying, but then again, but then again, it is helpful in that instead of having to test everything, you are reasonably sure that lots of classes of bugs will not be possible at runtime. So, so a bunch of bugs cannot happen that would be possible in, in, in other languages. So you could use this to define a hierarchy of languages where some languages are better than others, but we are not going to. No? Not explicitly, no. at least. Well, damn it. So, I, I might write here a list of languages in, uh, from, from top to bottom, but without implication of order. No, no, there's no order in them. Definitely not. No, no, absolutely not. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it needs a few more pages. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, wait, this is going on the other side. This is one of the pieces of left cut. <laughs> well, <laughs> the point is, this is not, uh, this would not be. <laughs> Necessarily a list of um, a list in, in, in order of quality, but it is very well a list in terms of how many errors does the compiler let you do. So in how many ways can you shoot your foot? No, I, I'm not kidding. So this is literally a thing. So depending on uh, depending on, on on what language you choose, you should be aware that you have more options to shoot your foot off. So for example, it's not a great prospect. Yeah, but that's the point. Try to build a big application in JavaScript. It is like <laughs> aiming Don't. a bazooka at your feet. <laughs> no, if, if it has to be big. Imagine be building a 50,000 line of code program in JavaScript or Python. Can I, can I jump out? <laughs> indeed. So, the point of the type system is indeed to provide a way to check our operations. So the type system kind of runs the program but not with values, only with types. The types of our simple language so far are just int and bool. And running the type checker on an expression determines the type of the expression. Or an error if the types are not compatible with the operations that we want to perform. So we define a new arrow, which is going to be arrow t, which 
runs the program in the domain of types. So, S1 plus S2 runs in the domain of types. This will return a type. So this has actually an expression here and returns a type here. So what for type do we have here? This is the result of adding two things. It's going to be an int, provided that S1 is an int. So S1 in the domain of type runs and returns an int. So I'm not really caring about what int it is, right? As long as it is one. Int. Yeah, int one. So S1 is an int, and then S2 is an int. Now I'm using the arrow because it's kind of like running, but I'm not interested in the result, but what kind of result I will get. Okay, in case these are not ints, uh, then we get an error. So I'm going to be lazy. I, I will be lazy, I'll say otherwise. S1 plus S2 runs in the domain of types and gives us a type error. Okay, so. When we find an integer value, so I find a value v here, and v is an int, then what is the type of v? Can you make me an example of uh, a v that would uh, fit in this description? Five. Would you like to make another example of V that would fit this description? A negative one, please. Minus zero. Minus zero. <laughs> Minus zero. Minus zero. Okay, and so on. Now, um, what would be, if V is a Boolean, what would be the type of B? Of V. Boolean. Yes, this is very straightforward. I know. So, uh, can you make me an example of B? One. <laughs> or one and zero, possibly. No, not no. possibly. That no. sucks miserably. <laughs> no. So, like yeah, okay, so V is either right. true or false. Oh. Because I, I would rather avoid the stroke. <laughs> okay. Now, we have the issue that what is the type of X? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how we are going to solve this. If it's going to look anything like what we've seen so far. What is the type of X? Who are in? And where is that? Uh, where do we know that? We don't. Well, in memory. Memory. Very in memory. Is it actually memory? No. no. I mean, run. memory is, is what is in the no. machine as we are running the program. But are we running the program? No. We are, when would place. this run? If you actually. No, we're not running. After parsing. parsing. After parsing, so during. The parsing. Yeah, so what is the thing that contains the parser? The system server. Yes, yeah, so what do we call the program that does things to the sources? The compiler. The compiler. So this is happen happening within the compiler, okay? So we, know, so we need something that kind of looks like memory. And it's not really memory because memory is only a proper name for the store of values. But this is storing the type of variables, right? So I'm, the, the usual name that we give to this thing is the typing context or just context, shortened as gamma. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding. This is typically how this is shortened. <laughs> Type theory people are weird, very weird. So anyway, so instead of gamma, I'm going to call it C. <laughs> it's 
And what is the type of X then? So, uh, sorry, what, what do you expect is going to, to be stored in C? In a typing context, then, type. In type. Or just, just one? Yeah. No, no, at least of types. Um, attached to the vari variable. Attached to? The variable ID. The variables. So the memory is a list of values attached to? Variable ID. Variables. And the context will be? Types of variables. Types attached to variables. Does, does this make sense? Yes. So, um, so the result here is just going to be whatever type was connected to X in a typing context. This is literally. So, but when is X declared to C? Exactly. When do we change C? When X is declared. So, when we evaluate the statement, because variable declaration is a statement, not an expression, when we have the statement uh, T, where T is a type, oh, sorry. Obviously, we have to carry the context with us. C, comma, T, X equal E. Is this a, a, a declaration of a variable? Yes. Yeah. OK. This types into something. Um, Dears, can you make me an example of T, X equals E? Yes, you can. So. Int x is 1. OK? That would be one that works. Yes. So. So, what's going to happen here? Because the typing of a statement returns a new context. So this is going to actually return a new context. Where? X is uh, T is connected to X. Or yeah, yeah. Where? X is connected to T. Always. Or at least X really exists. So, first of all, we don't like subsequent declarations. So, X does not belong to C. Otherwise, we are really declaring a variable. We might allow it, actually. So, it means that after the declaration, so we shadow the, the previous declaration. It might very well happen. But we are not allowing it today. So, not on our watch. Uh, also, I mean, OK, this is in. Goofy is equal to three. I don't know. Whatever. Error, error. Uh, but what about int p is equal to true? So what am I requiring then? T is five p. That the type of e is is equal to t. So c comma e has type t. So the same, yeah. all right? And basically, this is it. The rest you can kind of imagine. And now we take a break. Yes. Now this is our language. So uh, we've, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it last week. This is what's on Haskell right now. A statement is a variable declaration, a variable assignment, and if. Bye. Bye. Be right back. A semicolon. And expressions are values, variable lookups, greater than, addition, the rest you can imagine. Okay. So. For example, why is the if made like this? What does this mean? 
Okay. Then I was first day takes me uh well what, what is this? Uh for the expression uh yeah. the whole thing is the statement. And the, 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 the answer is it is true or false. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. the expre this expression, what's yeah. it gonna look like? For make an example. It's three is greater than one. Three is greater than one. This is the condition of the if. Then this will be then. then and this will be hours. Yes. Okay? So three things. In the semicolon, what is this? Um, the statement before the semicolon. Yes, so probably the current instruction. Yeah. And this will be the next. Yes. The rest of the program. Yes. Now, I will now define. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, values are just means for the interval constants. So I will define a type. And a type is going to be either, either an int or a boolean. Do I need anything else for this language? No. Not really. Okay. Uh, an error. I can just throw an exception in it. It, it's lazier. I like it. Yes. So let rec uh, type check as takes as input. What What do you think it's going to take as input? Type check as statement. Statement. Yes. Which I'm going to call s. And what does it return? Does it? Do statements have types? Uh, it checks that for you that they or nothing, and it just goes through the thing and throws an exception. It is the same actually, but I'm doing the very lazy way, and it's just either returning nothing. So type check. You, you say okay, no, it, it's a really imperative statement. So check the type of this thing. Okay, it's correct. We don't. Do if it's correct, it doesn't do anything. If it is wrong, okay. it throws an exception. Okay. But you will only show the first uh, error. Yes. I said lazy like three yeah, times already. Yeah. yeah, once you fix the first one, you get the second one. That works. So, match as we. Um, uh, do we need anything else for type checking? The context. We do need the context, yes. And the context is going to be a map from string into the type. Into type. So it connects. Variable. Variable. ID. Variable names. Variable. To their types. There is a reason why we need to, we need it right away that the first case is a variable declaration. So variable declaration of the name of the variable and the expression. Also, this is actually more slightly more implicit. What does this do? So we are declaring variable x to have value of this expression. Sorry? Let's make an example of a variable declaration in this case. Come on, let's let's give values to these uh, values to these actors. What could be x? An integer one. No. X is a variable name. Yeah. So this will be customer age. Okay? Equals an expression. Can you make me an example of an expression? Uh, that's an No, that is a statement. <laughs> oh, right. uh, a value. A value, yes. It says that. It quite easily says it here. So we could have customer age equals 40. 40. 40 plus 5. 40 plus 5, whatever. Okay. So we have an expression here. And what do we want to do? So we are declaring a variable. So we have to put in the context the type of e, the type of of e. Of e connected with uh, x. With x, yes. So we will. So, so I will get the type of E, so ET is e equal to get type of E within the context. Now get type doesn't exist yet, so I'm gonna make it here. Yeah, yeah, it's logical. 
<laughs> is the expression, context is map string type. And get type simply returns the type of the expression or throws an exception. For the moment, get type simply says not implement. So we, we can go on and build the, 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 the overall thing. So we have the type of expression E, and this type goes directly into the context. So we could say context prime is equal to context, sorry, map dot add, uh, let's see, key is x, value is t, and value is et within the context. What do we do with the context prime? Who shall use it? Who uses the context generated by a variable declaration? Is it perhaps used by the whatever is after the semicolon? As a matter of fact, it is. So actually, we just return the context, and this thing doesn't return unit, but it does return the context the new context, which is going to be useful for the semicolon. So, uh, another example of a statement is, oh sorry, what else did we have to check here before we return? If context contains x, then what we do? Is it allowed to redeclare a variable in our language? No. No. Oh, yeah. Maybe with? already declared variable. Otherwise, we go on and, um, and just return the, the new context. Then we have a variable declaration. The declaration, oh, sorry, uh, variable, variable, lookup. variable assignment. No, the lookup is an expression. Yeah, I was looking at the, yeah. uh, the yes. So assignment of x with expression e. What are we going to do? How are we going to type check assignment of variable x and expression e? So come on, I want to type check assignment of x to expression e. You get type of e first? I get type of e first, yes. And then? Then you look up the type of x in context. And I look up the type of x if in, the in the context. Ah, then I, if it isn't, I get I yeah. get an error. I get an exception, so I don't care. And then what do I require for them to be the same. same? The same. So if xt is different from et, then play with type mismatch. Then you would probably want to give some slightly more informative errors. Does the context change after assignment? No. So what is the resulting context? Context. Context. Okay. Now next one is going to be oh the if ah the if if is the nicest the nicest of them. If condition then else. What is required of the condition? Condition. Condition needs to return boolean. Condition returns a boolean. So if get type of condition with the context is different from boolean then fail with only boolean conditions allowed in ifs no. <laughs> wow <laughs> then um, then um, we type check t, mm -hmm. so let the context of t be type check as on the then, uh, the, the then branch and context. Then we do the same for the context of e. But what is the context at the end of the if? Is it the context of the then? Is it the context of the else? Is it something else? It depends. On what? Uh, if your condition is true or false. 
the context contains all the variable declarations, right? Yeah. Are the variable declarations inside the then or inside the else relevant? No. Mm -hmm. So, so what do we return after the, the old context? The old context. So we are literally implementing scoping. So the then and the else may declare whatever variables they want, but after the if, those variables do not exist anymore. Now, so you can still use everything that was declared before. But everything that was declared before the if obviously yes. remains. Uh, the, oh, sorry. Here he's complaining because bool means two things. Yeah, bool. bool is the type, but also the constructor of values. I have so I. Right? I can very easily disambiguate actually. I can say type.bool, and now it knows clearly that I'm talking about the, the, the bool called type. So the last one is semicolon, semicolon of uh, A followed by B. Was it the last one? Yeah. Yes. Semicolon A, B. What do I do here? So A is a statement, right? Or even a bunch of statements, possibly. Yes. Type check A. So, shall I type check it? Yes. Context of A is equal to type check A with the context. No. Then, will I type check B? Yes, with the context of A. With the context of A. Why the context of A? Otherwise, you just uh, you keep on doing this context of A. You just end up in a link there. The box. A can yeah, but the point variable. is, if A declares variables, are those variables decla declarations visible in B? Yes. If you have uh, x equals 0 and then something that uses x, then, then it's fine. The semicolon propagates the variable declarations. Whatever you whatever is declared before a semicolon is valid after the semicolon. Otherwise, it forgets what's up there. Exactly, otherwise, it forgets what's up there. Now, the if or stuff like the while loop, etc., in the body of the then, the else, and the while loop, then you have local declarations which are not visible after. That's but, but the semicolon does the things go through. So now I type check B with, a. with the context of A. And finally, what is the, the resulting context? Like B. The context of B. This is a type checking. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, we have to, to build uh, the get type. Uh, once again, laziness. Match E with. So, value of possible values are int, whatever int. Does it matter what int it is? No. no. What is the type of an int value? So, type.int. Otherwise, it's going to complain because there's confusion. Um, what is the type of a Boolean value? Type Boolean. Fire pits. What is the type of a Boolean value? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Then, if I look up a variable, what is its type? You get type with the expression. This is just a variable lookup. So it's I have something like 3 plus i. Look it up in the context. I look it up in the context. Context of x. And if the variable is not there, what's going to happen? Error. I just throw an exception, which is more than five in this one. Then, we have a comparison greater than expression one, expression two. What shall I do? Check if they're both in. Check if they're both in. So, get type E1. So, if get type E1 context is different from type.int, or, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do them both. Could very well throw the other way, by the way. Then, fail yeah, with and not compare non int values. And what is the type of greater than? Boolean. Boolean. So, type. Ah. Needs to the second E1. Sorry? Needs to yeah, the second E1. Yeah, the second E1. You're doing E1 compare yeah. now. Ooh. Sorry, thanks. We've got some mistakes happening. Yeah, life sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> now. You can't find it. Why is it copying code? It's so <laughs> you, can't, you can't find it anywhere. <laughs> so for addition, I'm going to copy this because it, oh, because it probably looks, looks the same. So add E1, E2. Do the types need to be to add the things together? Yes. Yes, yeah, so this check remains, but what is the type? 
visual implementations. Hmm. Now we really have done type checking. No, I'm not here. So look, what? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Well, fifteen. We don't have a time. Yeah. So let's see if this actually blows up now. So we have evaluation. Uh, now the sample was we declare x to be equal to zero. Then we declare i to be equal to two. Then if x is greater than i, we declare z to be equal to true. Uh, then x is assigned to i plus z plus three. Otherwise, we declare z to be equal to true, and then we do x is equal to y plus three. Okay, so this should actually work. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is just ugly because it, we don't have a parser. This is like a case for make a parser. But you have already done assignments one, zero, one, and two, so you have the parsers nice, so you can make this nicer. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin by printing the type checking. Why is it printing? On the sample. And what is the initial context? Empty one. Empty one. Let's see where it prints. I'm kind of curious now. <gasps> Cannot compare non int values. Let's see. Why you oh this is y and this is z. <gasps> oh this is interesting. <laughs> or not. <gasps> oh. Yeah, you're adding z to i. So do you remember the so but let's see what happens if I just evaluate this. You can't add i and z. If I evaluate it doesn't complain. Why? Is x greater than i? No, why? No. So which one of the if branches is run? The second one. The second one. And does the second one fail? No. No. But what the type checker is telling us is that the if is actually is actually invalid. So what the type checker is doing is it's kind of running all branches at the same time and checking if any of the possible branches will generate the type error. So the type checker is actually a very powerful tool. Otherwise, you would have to test everything, every possible path of code. So the type checker is actually complaining that this is not valid. How do I fix this? Make it one and two. Or one and five. But then the second one has to be. Sorry? The second declaration of key. The second declaration of is perfectly fine because I don't use it, I just declare it. Oh, yeah. But here, because I do y plus z plus 3, then z has to be of a reasonable type. Yeah. And I will also fix the, the error because I cannot add one of values. Let's run this now. And what we get, you see, above, no, you don't. Yeah, we can. Tiny. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the nice future people that will watch the video can't see shit. <laughs> so, well, tell me perfectly. You think that? You really know? Come on, <laughs> just not to me. So, you see, above we have the context, the resulting context. And is this what we expect from the context? Yeah, basically. Because at the end, the only two variables, and at the end of the program, are visible are x of type and y of type int. Then we run the program, and at the end of the program, we see the same variables. Why do we see the same variables at the end of the program? Because it's correct. Because these are the variables that are in scope at the end. So even if a z has been declared and type checked, at the end of the program, the only variables through which we get a value are the ones that had a type before. All right? Good. Do you have any questions? No. Like why all this? <laughs> why? <laughs> why do you torture us so much? Uh, try to get you to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, any further considerations? Then enjoy lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah.